Hello everyone, welcome back to Football and I know your home of Dutch football. Here it is, a preview podcast of PSV against Borussia Dortmund. Champions League is back and PSV are the only Dutch team in this competition left with, of course, finals and Ajax in their own competitions, Europa League and Europa Conference League, respectively. So can PSV keep going, keep pushing in this competition, which have done all right in so far? It felt like PSV could be knocked out for a time in the Champions League, but they're still in it. So we're looking forward to a brilliant double header against Dortmund. And I need someone to come and talk about the team that the PSV will be playing. So here's Ali from the Dortmund Dispatch podcast, an English language podcast on Dortmund. Ali, good to have you. Thanks for having me, man. I'm really happy to be discussing uh, the tie with you. And of course, if you want to get in touch with Ali or his podcast after the show, once you watch this, then um, I'll leave something in the description for anyone on YouTube. So... Ali, PSV against Dortmund, how do you feel about this tie? When PSV came out of the hat, were you actually quite happy? I couldn't understand why, by the way. So, all right. Um, when uh, the draw was happening, I actually tweeted out saying, uh, UEFA loves a story. So they're either going to give us Inter Milan because of Mickey Tarian, or they're going to give us PSV for uh, Daniel Malin. They gave us PSV. And so I, I kind of half expected it, but... Um, I, I think it's a, a great tie from a footballing perspective just because uh, PSV are incredible this season. And um, in the Champions League, Dortmund's been great. In the league, not so much. But in, in the Champions League, we've been good. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think, I think you know, it's a, it's, it's a solid game. And on the face of it, how what chances do you think you give Dortmund for going through in this one? What, just to gauge your kind of feelings on it already. Ahead of the time. Well, I'm, I'm confident. I'm not going to lie. Like yeah. the uh, the first uh, game away for us, right? Home for you. Um, I'm expecting us to struggle a little bit just because uh, uh, Bosch has set up like the team to be so like f- mm. free flowing and there's a lot of uh, 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 freedom and creativity, especially up top. So I'm really expecting them to be like very difficult for us to manage. But defensively in the Champions League, we've been pretty solid. So like I'm. You know, if if we go home losing two one, tying one one, I'm happy. That's a that's a wow. win for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, anything more, it's going to be a like an uphill battle at home. Mm. So I think from PSV's point of view, like taking a win to Germany is going to be a good position. If it's a one goal mm-hmm. lead, I, I think I think Dutch football fans, PSV fans, are going to be quite hopeful that they can see it through in the second leg. However. I can say from the get-go, people that haven't watched PSV too much this season, PSV are not a defensive side. They're not going to go to Germany and sit back and then hold out for a nil-nil, draw in the second leg. They're just not that kind of team whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And one big reason for that is Peter Bosch is their manager. He has been brilliant for them in the league this season, going, well, unbeaten still um, in the area of Z. Only a couple of draws. The rest of them have been wins so far. So from a league perspective, yes, brilliant. I think if, if you then start thinking, was this one of the best teams that have ever been in the Eredivisie? I don't think so, but that's because of all the legendary teams seen before and some fantastic individual players that have graced the Eredivisie over the years. But I think um, this PSV team can't be too far behind the Ajax team that we saw in the Eredivisie not too long ago, probably, mm. I can't remember what year it was, five five years ago now. Um, that took them yeah. really far in the Champions League. They got to the semis. Uh, but, you, you know... I don't think you can count PSV out of this. I don't think I don't think many people that would easily say, "Oh, with Dortmund all day." You know, over two legs, yes, it does give a German side an advantage. But at home, PSV going first, I think um, I think there's a really good chance in my in my view anyway, and perhaps some Dutch football fans watching as well that that they can take a win, a draw, at least um, from this first leg, and then we'll talk about the second leg once we get there. Um, but it could be a completely different story then, of course. Yeah, so the threats then, let's get into some of these. And um, you must have seen a little bit of PSV. You know, some of the players, yeah. it's got Hervin, Lozano, Johan Bakayoko down the wings. Noah Long is out injured. Um, Luke Young is up top, tall striker, loves headers. And then in midfield, we've got Joey Veerman, who's been a creative talent this season. There are, of course, more threats. But I think those are those key figures. Who are you worried about most there, Ali? Uh, Luke De Jong. Mm. Uh, he has, what, uh, 19 goals this season? Uh, he's incredible in the air. 
Um, yeah. I'm also I'm also a Barca fan, so I know a lot about Luke De Jong. So I um, if if I was him, I I pick uh, Schlatter back to target and mm. tell the team every chance you get, swing the ball to me. Like I, I want every cross on every duel with Schlotterbeck. Um <laughs> but in terms of everybody like like Veerman's very, very clever, right? And he picks up uh you know, picks up the ball in uh, really good spaces. Um and we've been having trouble with our like uh pivot, double pivot uh system yeah. in terms of quality there because of uh like the constant rotation of like Os Chan and, and Emery Chan and people like that. So um I do expect those two mainly to be um a problem. Um, I know that uh, PSV like to attack mainly down the wings. So, yeah. like you said, Abakioko and, and the rest of the cast, like they're going to be, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy game. I hope I didn't paint that picture early, but <laughs> I am saying that, like, it's like I'm confident enough to say that, like, we should win this. You know what I mean? But I'm not counting PSV out. I, like, this is, this is not an easy game by any means. I can see why. Like, the, PSV had lots lost in the Dutch Cup. They lost away at Feyenoord, but they mm. weren't fortunate not to come over the draw. Uh, well, there wasn't been a draw in the Cup, but they, it could have been one-one late in the game, extra time penalties. Mm-hmm. So that in terms of those big challenges in the Netherlands, yes, you've got to talk about the games against RZ, Feyenoord, Twente, Ajax, and they've overcome the challenge of Twente really comfortably. Ajax at home, well, that was because they were terrible at the time. Feyenoord have been tricky, but they have done quite well I think in in domestic terms Champions League though lost four away at Arsenal and then at home yes they are stronger they can they can get enough chances to win games away from home though thinking heads for second leg I do think they are going to struggle the game against Sevilla was a perfect example they went 2-0 down it was a brilliant comeback don't get me wrong I was I was so excited so excited until the end of the game 3-2 I, I, I couldn't believe they came back but it was really quite a lethargic performance and much of that game. And only when that red card, I think it was, happened, could PSV start to really create chances. And then Bosch took over with the way he plays. Then he just threw course to the wind and wanted the win. The win helped him get through. So his tactics in that game were stupendous. You, you can't blame him. And it seemed r- ridiculous at the time. But throwing on attacking player, attacking player, it meant they had those chances and won the game 3 2. We're not really going to see a situation like that against Dortmund. And I'm I'm worried that in the away match in particular, that Borussia Dortmund can just they'll they'll overrun PSV and it'll be way too much. Because on the whole, PSV do throw too many players forward. They've got a little better, I think, at that recently. I don't think that it's been a hallmark of their last month or two. Um they also haven't really needed to do that yet. They haven't really needed to go when they've gone behind, like throw lots of players forward. Um but I do worry that that is going to be an issue because Bosch does play so attacking that they're just going to get picked off on the counter attack. Yeah, I uh, listen. It appears to be still dangerous, right? Yes, yeah. uh, they still um, haven't really got that uh, maturity across the board in terms of Champions League because there is like a maturity aspect, even if mm-hmm. you know there's young players involved. But um, man, they're good, and the way they play, like. Uh, man, they're so fluid, so nice. It reminds me of yeah. you know Dorman back in the day. <laughs> like right now with Terzic, we're a very defensive team, and it's nice in terms of not conceding as much. But we do sometimes struggle when all he wants to do is defend. Um, so watching PSV, it's fun. It's really fun. Now Champions League is a different story, right? Like I said, but it's uh, I'm I'm very excited for this game, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's going to be on the whole. Like, this is good. this is going to be a cracking co- couple of games, mm-hmm. and that's what we want. We want this in the Champions League. But I just Big hope time. that PSV can make the most of it because I asked you your opinion on getting PS3 in the draw. I think mm-hmm. from PS3's point of view, they're always going to get a really difficult team no matter what. Yeah, but you know, like oh, it wasn't this team and it wasn't this team. So <laughs> I guess kind of kind of be happy it wasn't one of the worst teams out the hat. <laughs> Definitely. And then let, yeah. let's see how that one goes. Yeah, I think. Listen. Uh, uh, how can I say this? It it really can go either way, mm. right? Only because okay, so I guess if you don't mind me jumping into this, uh, uh, PSV's strength and play style is almost Dortmund's weakness in terms of uh, sometimes the wingers don't always track back for us, right? So like JBG or Sancho or Daniel Malin, they aren't always coming back, right? So the uh, fullbacks are isolated. Sometimes, whether it's Ian Madsen or Ryers or just whoever's in the fullback position. Um, 
and uh Bosch likes to overload the wings right yeah. with the wing backs and and the wingers and even a midfielder will come to support so like it it can like it can really go either way but if Dortmund are disciplined I really like I I hope <laughs> I hope we take this mm-hmm. I think the the thing with the wings you said about there if you got Bakayoko and Lozano Danny either side Teza on, on the right creating a bit of an mm-hmm. overload on the left we're going to expect Sergio Dest to get really far out the pitch big time um, yeah. it was a left winger against Heracles in the, the league match yeah. <laughs> um, on, on on Friday night so I think you'll say that the threats it's it's what Dortmund don't like it's PSV strength yes they will get the ball wide constantly throwing balls into the box getting the people in and around but then after that, if the ball drops out to anyone in the middle, Joe Veerman, he's a great threat from outside the box. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're saying there that it's everything you that you hate. Um, <laughs> what can you do about it? What what makes you confident on going through then still? So it's 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 a lot of defensive discipline because, mm-hmm. uh, for example, AC Milan, right? We played them earlier um, in the group stages, and they also love to attack down the wings, right? They have. Uh, uh, uh Liao on, on the left and uh, uh Chukwesi, I think it was on the right and Chukwesi scored right because of just a lack of a defensive discipline obviously it was a great bit of a uh, uh, a skill he got you know between two players and shot and it, it, it went in but it's it's really just defensive discipline like if you're a winger like for example right the uh, XPSV boy right Daniel Malin his his tracking back is atrocious, <laughs> and I can I can really see Bosch saying, "Listen, go at the right back. Just go at Ryerson. Just every time you get the ball, run at him, and then overload. Um, or so, uh, sorry, overlap uh, uh, the left back, because if if Marlon doesn't track back once, that's potentially a cross into uh, Luke De Jong, who's incredible in the air. Yeah, that's you know, like it's it's a it could be a really bad situation if the defensive focus is off. So what can they do? Focus. Don't slip up. You just need to get, uh, you need to minimize uh, the risk and the damage away from home and then bring it home. And then that way we're able to actually, you know, with the environment and the stadium behind me, like, you know, the yellow wall should help us through. Yeah, I do love this background, by the way. I haven't even <laughs> on, on, on this actual podcast. I did before we started, but yeah, that's a great, <laughs> it's a great little background there. Appreciate um, it. <laughs> so, like, you see, we've talked about PSV and their threats. Um, what we think might happen if PSV can get some attacks away. So, let's talk about the biggest threats then that you've got in the league. You're fourth, if I'm not mistaken, and unbeaten so far this so calendar right. year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we these positives. Talk me to me about how the feeling is around the club the team and who these big threats are that I, I admit maybe some people are watching this into they don't know who the biggest threats are for Dortmund nowadays I know there are still mm-hmm. some familiar names there but yeah give us um give us an insight yeah so basically uh in terms of uh the feeling around the club right we're like as fans we're starting to lose hope in Terzic I say starting some people have fully lost hope but mm. we're starting to lose hope because um He's very defensive minded and he really wants to minimize uh, the goals conceded. But on the opposite end, when he counters, it seems like the team doesn't really have like a sequence of of like passes that they know how to make in terms of like, for example, right. If we look at like Antonio Conte's teams or uh, uh, Diego Simeone's teams, right, they're also very defensive. But when they counter, there's a sequence of passes, right. It goes from, Mm -hmm. for example, right back to center mid. It goes into the attacking mid. He plays it over. Um, over the back line into the right winger, he crosses it into the striker. It's very expected. It's hard to stop because it's so fast. Dorman don't know how to counter like that, right? Because there's a lot of uh, wingers who just like to carry the ball, right? For example, Malin or JBG or or uh, Brandt or even Royce, right? Obviously, Royce is a great playmaker as well as Brandt. But so in terms of the trust, it's starting to break because we're like, we don't know if this suits our style, right? The Dortmund style. Mm. Now you talked about threats. So we have, uh, we have uh, Julian Brandt, who's uh, back and fully fit. Uh, he's, he's been like our, you know, our a creative outlet or rather our main creative outlet. We have Sancho back at the club. Um, Ian Matson in, in left back has been incredible. Like his, mm. uh, there was a cross uh, last week into um, 
I believe it was full Krug, if I'm not mistaken, but incredible cross. You got to check that out. It was phenomenal. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, uh, a JBG, a Daniel Marlin starting to fire off again, finally. Uh, full Krug, you know, is a very uh, like traditional striker. You know what I mean? Uh, so we have a lot of um, players who can produce. It's just a matter of will they produce, right? Because right. of the okay. uh, system and tactics. So you feel as though a better coach probably would get the best out of these players and you should be higher at the league. Perhaps yeah. your favorite oh, for the Champions time. League if it was a better coach, yeah. It's just it's 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 not a style that suits the players, right? Because you have you have Sabitzer and you have, oh I forgot about Sabitzer. He's an excellent player, right? But he's playing him as essentially an eight when he's more of a attacking midfielder, right? Because we see him in his um in his uh in his national team playing as a ten and he's so uh, productive on you know mm -hmm. just in the final third but we don't get to see that as much right because we don't have a well-built team fully so i think i think definitely it's um you know there are a number of problems but there's also you know that uh spark that keeps us watching so <laughs> yeah like like there's a you know there's always a like an aspect of you know I, i'd like this to change or i'd like that to change but the team is good it just has some minor problems and defensively like i i love our back line right now right on on the right we have uh ryerson he just came back from injury on the left we have our uh low knee uh ian madsen and then uh, center backs it's either hummels schlotterbeck or zula three excellent center backs mm -hmm. and then in uh, we have Kobul, who's like phenomenal i don't know if you've seen anything from him but he's phenomenal uh saved us in a lot of matches so yeah i like i said i like our team i like our chances it's just it's like uh silly mistakes can just you know take us out okay so perhaps there's a little bit of unpredictability in this tie then mm -hmm. uh, as a whole we don't quite yeah. know how it'll go individual mistakes might rule it a little bit we'll see mm -hmm. uh, talking of individual mistakes i must touch upon andre Romalio, who has been a bit of a weak link for psv this season uh, i mm -hmm. don't think anyone's gonna criticize me for saying that he has been um he, he played the sense back and has been just throwing in some silly mistakes i have to say though that the way psv play it does leave him open so you mm -hmm. can't sometimes blame him but has been a bit clumsy and has led to goals going against his side so i wonder whether he gets played in the champions league game or whether uh yodi schouten sits in at sense back he has been defensive midfield but has been played at sense back occasionally um instead of romalio and he's just been dropped to the bench I don't know at the minute, and that, that's going to be a, an interesting one coming up to Tuesday night. I think Romali will play um, and watch his space in case he makes a mistake. Um, he'll play next to Boscagli. I really like Boscagli. It's great at the ball, calm heads. Uh, full backs, yeah, we said, got Taser and Dest. Midfield could be Scouting and Veerman. Um, I don't know who will play, though, as attacking midfield. It might be Tillman um, again. Might be, might not be. And then, yeah wingers and striker we talked about already so appears to be in the mm -hmm. whole quite decided side there only might be two three players that could change that and in goal walter benitez who I, I think on the whole has been very very good this season perhaps the best keeper in, in the eredivisie um would you like to tell us a bit more then ali i, I need to ask you because of course there are two players are on the periphery of the dutch national side at the moment coming into the euros Ian martin and um daniel marlin marlin in particular has been far more in the fold Mm -hmm. But we criticise him constantly for not being good enough. And when he gets a chance in Arania, doesn't doesn't produce. Martin's more on the outside, likely to be a third choice left back at best at the moment. He could come in mm -hmm. though in, in ahead of Daily Blint. But we think that Ronald Koeman, national team manager, he's not going to uh, put Martin ahead of Daily Blint because he loves his Blint experience much to our mm -hmm. much to our disgust. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> we need to be out this side completely. Um, <laughs> but yeah, talk to us about those two. So uh Ian Madsen, um I'm so sorry if I pronounced any name wrong, by the way, but he's he's really good and he's really, really smart, right? So uh he's obviously he starts as a left back, uh, but he's constantly popping in um yeah. into like the sixth position and he provides okay. like that extra player in the midfield to create those overloads. And that's such an important movement, especially in today's game, because if the winger follows him right into the midfield now our left winger right whether it's a jbg or sancho whoever it is uh now is 1v1 versus their opponent right and and in most cases you take that 
right? But if they don't follow, then you have an extra midfielder and and you've completely outnumbered uh, the opposition's uh, uh, a midfield line, whatever it is, right? So it's, he's very smart. He uh, he loves going forward, but he's also pretty strong defensively. At first, I had you know a couple of concerns because um, mm-hmm. um, you know he lost a couple of balls, and I was just like, "Come on, man! You know <laughs> you got to sharpen up." But he's he's good. I like him. I really do like him. Now with Malin, I have a not a love hate relationship. I like him, but he just doesn't do enough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I I don't think he's an out and out winger. I don't think he's an out and out striker. I think he's someone you want to play off of a striker, whether it's like a, a three four three formation where he's just, you know, he just he picks up the piece. Like he's a, he's in in what the old game would call a second striker, right? He just picks up the pieces and finishes. He was a he's brilliant left winger at one point for PSV. Yeah, I, I has played yeah. as a striker too, by the way. Yeah, but we liked him off the last the last defender, and we really liked him exactly. on the left when he wasn't. He wasn't necessarily a producer, but was able to be mm-hmm. someone who's quite a, a little bit like, like a Leon Bailey, but on the other side. Um, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. No, no, I, I fully agree. I well, when he's played on no, the he's... right wing, where he's a right footer, like he's mm-hmm. he's so far out wide, and he's end mm-hmm. up having to like play as a proper winger when he's not one. And um, I don't know. There's a bit of that going on with the Netherlands, but also if he is played as a striker, yeah, not doing enough, like you said. Hundred percent, and plus in um, I mean, uh, in the Dutch team you have Luke De Jong still, you have Memphis Depay, you have um, other like uh, strikers that are uh, hungrier in some I mean, sense, right, to produce ahead of well ahead of the the Euros. Yeah, Luke De Jong's not going to be included at all. Um, oh yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. Memphis is going to be possibly the main striker if he's back from mm-hmm. back from injury mm-hmm. properly. Brian Robbie's um, a, a big physical. A striker who's probably going to be picked as well. So you're looking mm-hmm. at Memphis and probably being that main number nine. Marlon probably would work well off one of those, but in the way that we mm-hmm. play, he would be the second striker. And then you have no threat really apart from the striker and Marlon. Whereas we like to mm-hmm. have a Chavi Sermons behind um He's possibly excellent. Cody Hapo. You can't live out Cody Hapo yeah. really. Yeah. So yeah. and then you got Frankie. That's a pretty good team. That's actually a very that's a very good team. Um don't tell anyone well, we might have a chance at the <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> I got you, got you. Um, yeah, so I like Malin, like I said, but he just, um, I think, one, the tactics don't suit him because he's, like we said, having to play as an actual winger. When he's not, he's just, he's someone you want in the final third just to touch and shoot. Uh, he scored, I think, two goals last week, both of them really nice, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think I think he's good, but he just hasn't done enough. But I like Matson. I really like Matson. I hope, I hope we buy him. He's very good. <laughs> and not yeah. too late as well for a shout at the Euro squad. So that's good to hear. Um, Ali, so ahead of yes, the two legs then, give us your prediction. You've let mm-hmm. in already that you'd be happy with perhaps a first leg defeat or a draw um, because you're confident in the second leg that at home you'll sort, sort it out. Yeah, so I think, okay, I want to be happy, but I will take it. <laughs> you know, I will take a, a 2-1. I'll take a 1-1 um, in the first leg because... Um, at home, we, I don't know, it's, it's like something in, you know, in, in the, you know, uh, the team's brain chemistry, something clicks where as soon as like uh, the team is behind them, the uh, the fans are behind them, uh, we're able to score a lot of goals, especially um, at home in the Champions League. So I think, I think, uh, like I said, if we go home with a 1-1, 2-1, I'm, I'm content because I, I expect us to finish the job at home. Mm. I think, um my optimism is not not quite as strong for a, a home win. I don't know. If they did, I'll be delighted. I think PSV would need at least two clear goals to have a chance of second leg. But even if it were 2 0, I don't know. I do think that Dortmund will pick PSV apart in the second leg. I think it could be, I, I think it might even be three or four, perhaps to a German side, mm-hmm. three, four, or one. Um, but looking at the home leg, perhaps, a, perhaps yeah, a draw or a narrow home win. I'm going to go with a 1-1 first leg and then I'll go mm-hmm. with 3-0 to Dortmund in the second leg. Okay. But I think from a Dutch football point of view, we need PS3 to be getting through these two legs, getting to a quarterfinal, more coefficient points for Netherlands. Sixth best league in Europe we've grown up to now. Um, mm-hmm. we, we have ambitions to try and overtake France in the future. Probably not going to be this season though. And games like <laughs> this are massive to show how far the Odyssey can, can go. Um, and we take out a team that 
aren't the absolute best in Germany, but are amongst the third, fourth, fifth kind of best teams. Mm -hmm. It's up to Peter to try and break that mould and show that the Derrida Rizzi can do it. Um, my prediction is that they don't think they can, though. <laughs> PSV got some good players, but I just think with a tactic of second leg that Bosch has, that it might sound brave, but I just think it's going to get blown apart. PSV weren't going to sit in for long periods and try and hold out for a half or 60 minutes. I just don't see that. Well, yeah, because the, uh, you know, uh, like we said earlier, it's a very progressive style of uh, football and they like to go forward. So that leaves, I think you mentioned it earlier, uh, your center backs or even your defensive mid, like pretty uh, open to attack. And we have pretty fast players in, in JBG, mm -hmm. even Mullen, um, in mm -hmm. Royce and Brandt and uh, so on and so forth to um, exploit the space, uh, exploit the spaces left part of me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a fun game win, loss or draw. I'm expecting a very good competition. Um, and I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to it. Great. Ali, thank you so much for joining us on Football Anya. And if anyone wants to find you, um, we've left something in the description, but Ali, you, can you just tell us about your podcast? So we are a team of, uh, writers, um, who just uh, decided to uh, join together and create Dorman Dispatch. Uh, most of us write on a BVB Buzz. And uh, yeah, we just decided uh, at the start of the season to create something so that we're able to just, you know, discuss and verbalize how we feel outside of just writing. Um, and we have people from across the world. I'm personally in Canada. We have two people from the States, one in the UK, one in India, and one in Brazil. Um, yeah, we're a big team um, and we're just constantly uh, uh, rotating the lineup. So you may not hear me every week, but you'll definitely hear Eli. Um, he's he's kind of like the main host. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a rotating lineup. It's it's great. Uh, we have a lot of fun on there. We uh, it's it's not so formal, but it's still, you know, there's still a lot of like tactical analysis and things like that. So, yeah, man, um, I hope you guys can check us out. We're Dortmund Dispatch on all platforms, um, TikTok, Instagram uh twitter and you can uh, hear us on all platforms as well spotify apple music everything excellent thank you ali and yep football anya dutch football in english language if you're new here do subscribe to us on youtube we've got a website we've got twitter you know go go and find us um but also give us a comment down below what do you think will happen in this game over the two legs do psv have a chance we know there are some dutch football fans watching that will give us their opinion um let us know down below what do you think will happen Subscribe to Football Down if you're new, and of course, give this podcast a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks all for now.